This is National People's Congress, China's top legislature. Some 3,000 deputies are coming to attend its annual session in Beijing. They're from all walks of life, all 56 ethnic groups, and every distant corner of China. The conglomeration of these individuals forms the epicenter of the state apparatus in the world's most populous country. This legislative body is often mystified and sometimes honorated by Western observers. Still, the National People's Congress, or NPC, is effectively even more powerful than its U.S. counterpart, the United States Congress, and here's why. Listen, the session is about to begin. The session now. Such is an annual routine for the Premier to deliver an all-encompassing government work report. It's equivalent of a year-end record card, covering everything from food security to AI technology, from pandemic control to foreign policy. What follows will be a vote of confidence by 3,000 deputies voicing the people's judgment on the government's performance. This could easily be the world's largest democratic session. But the voting session exhibits only a scrape of NPC's power range. It passes laws, interprets the constitution, approves budgets, alters administrative divisions. And here it is. It is an NPC's purview to elect the president of China, along with the heads of top legislature, judiciary, and procuratory organs, making it immensely powerful. This organizational structure comes in stark contrast to the ubiquitous checks and balances in U.S. politics, where presidents veto Congress and the Supreme Court overrules presidents. There are certainly merits in this U.S. model to lock separate government branches in a merry-go-round, but sometimes it doesn't fare so well. Now we're here with the government shutdown over his broken promise while the Chinese are landing spacecraft on the dark side of the moon. That's what they're doing. And yes, that lunar mission was also highlighted in the government work report for NPC two years back. In China's state machinery, all the government branches are ultimately held accountable by NPC. That shapes NPC to be more than just a legislature, but the highest organ of state power. For most of the nearly 3,000 NPC deputies, it is a part-time, unpaid job. They gather in Beijing once a year to generate laws and national policies, and then go back to resume their respective professions. A large chunk of them are ordinary technicians, farmers, migrant workers. But in here, there are also lawmakers, supervisors, and decision makers. The national allocation of deputies is primarily based on demographics. For example, Shandong province, with a staggering 100 million residents, has 175 deputies. Macau, much smaller both in size and population, has 12. It is kind of like Texas vis-a-vis -vis Delaware in the U.S. House of Representatives. Ethnically speaking, the non-Han Chinese account for 9% in nationwide headcounts, but they take up to 15% of NPC seats. Like Joshi Jiangshan, who is the only deputy this year from an ethnic group called Loba from Tibet. At least one seat is legally reserved for them, even though there are only 3,000 Loba among 1.4 billion Chinese. NPC once made some decisions that have changed the course of history, like saving Elon Musk. Well, that's not the exact motion, of course. By the end of 2019, Tesla established a gigafactory in Shanghai in a record nine months. It took place right at a time when Elon Musk was wrestling with Tesla's own sluggish manufacturing capacity and therefore mired in a fierce tug of war with Wall Street's short sellers. Wait a little while. Yeah, I sure if it was worth it. Sure. Let's see what happened to Tesla's stock prices after that. This dramatic change could all boil down to NPC's authorization to expand and empower Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone. 
clearing crucial legal ground for Tesla to move into Shanghai and the world's largest EV market. That story has a crazier version some four decades ago. In 1980s, NPC approved the first five special economic zones as an attempt for China to shift from its planned economy formula. Among them was Shenzhen, no more than a petty fishing village when NPC made a far-reaching decision. Today, it is home to technology giants like Tencent and Huawei. Forty years on, Shenzhen's total GDP skyrocketed by 10,000 times from 42 million US dollars to 420 billion. In recent years, the NPC hasn't stopped making waves, like charging the anti-corruption drive by establishing a national supervisory branch, or enacting China's very first civil code to delineate citizens' rights and obligations in an overarching manner. This year, the revised NPC Organic Law will be reviewed and voted on in this session. If it passes, the supremacy of this democratic institution in China's state system will be further strengthened. This is NPC sending signal, the buck stops here.